the actual cigarettes and went to the electronic cigarettes, which is still just as bad as smoking a cigarette. No difference. Except for it takes electricity to run that thing. And eventually it might blow up in your face as well. I heard people say that they've had their e-cigarettes blow up in their faces. But I tried every last thing, but then until I let God be the controller of my world, until I let God, as as the song says, it's called backseat, backseat Driver, when I finally let God be the backseat driver, or I let God take over the wheel, Jesus take the wheel, as soon as I let God take the wheel and take control, that's when... I quit smoking. That's when I found me a wife. That's when I desired to have children. That's when, see, when you let God into your daily life and you say, okay, God, I don't want to lean to my own understandings. I don't want this to be another miserable fail to where I fall flat on my face and I come begging you because I screwed up. I mean, and to be honest, Chris, how many times have you done that yourself where you would screw up and say, God, I know I did that again. I am so sorry. Why did I just do that? Yes. Um, <laughs> countless times, like I said earlier in the show. Too many times to count. I've... Too many times to count. But God is faithful and just to forgive. Right. And that's what, and that's perfect, too. You said that because that leads into this same scripture. If you... It says, do not lean to your own understandings and your ways acknowledge him. You should make your path straight your paths. God, and uh, I'm losing my train of thought. Say what you just said again about how God, it, I forgot, you just said it too. The scripture. God is just to forgive us. Yes, that's what it was. So God is just to forgive us, but we got to not lean to the way we think it's supposed to happen. Just, and my wife always says this, and I'm going to tell her I had to say this on the show, but just because it happened that way before does not mean it'll happen that way again. Trust me, there are, there are, there's every, every aspect of life. You can see how things don't happen the way they always did. It's like when you bounce a ball. You can't bounce a ball directly into a cup every single time. Sometimes that ball is going to veer off somewhere else. You ever seen those uh, YouTube videos where they take a ping pong ball and they bounce them into a cup and they keep bouncing? Eventually, that ping pong ball is not going to bounce into that cup one day. It's going to veer off and fly off to the table, hit someone in the forehead one day. With that being said, and that's one of my joking things, (laughs) but with, with that being said, nothing is ever perfect. So just because it happened that way, billions, you could have had it happen that way for your whole entire life and your last day in your deathbed, it could change for you. It's because it's it's just the way it is. It's never going to be perfect. And if we lean not to our understandings, but in all our ways acknowledge him, he shall make straighter paths. If we do that, then God will be just to forgive us. But if we can't, if we can, if we take God out of that picture, just imagine tearing the pages of the Bible and saying, we don't need this now. We don't need this. We're going to try it our own way. If we stop for a minute and say, you know what, God, I'm so sorry. Let me, let me into you. Let me take you into my situation here. Let me put you into the middle. And I said this, this to my wife and a bunch of people in my church in Michigan. In any relationship, Jesus got to be the centerpiece of your table in any relationship. So here's how you make Jesus the centerpiece of every relationship. You super glue him to the middle of the table. <laughs> that way he can't leave. No, I'm just kidding. But you make him every part of your situation. And then when you make him part of your situation, that situation seems to just go away. It always does that. When you ever you whenever you put God into that situation, God goes, Really? That's the thing you're worried about? That right there? I died for that years ago. I conquered that already. You're still afraid of that? No, get wrong. God ain't going to laugh at us. But he's saying, you're still afraid of that? Here, let me take that again from you. He takes that, throws as far as the east as to the west. Oh, you don't need that no more. So God takes our failures and what we are afraid of and everything and throws as far as the east as to the west. But if we lean to not unto our own understandings, but in our ways acknowledge him, he is faithful and just to forgive us. Now, if we're going to be out there sitting every day of the week and just continuously sin and go, I'm sorry, God, continuously sin, oh, I'm sorry, God, it would be the same thing if I punched you in the face 
And I said, I was sorry. At first, you might say, okay, I forgive you. Don't do it again. But if I punched you again in the face and I said, I'm sorry, and then I punched you again in the face, eventually you're going to, you know, I'm sick and tired. You punch me in the face. You get away from me. So it's just, it's just like God. How many times can God take a slap to the face or punch to the face, but then go back, oh, I'm sorry, God, punch. Oh, I'm sorry, God. Eventually, God's going to hand you over to a reprobate mind. So if you start leaning to your own ways of thinking and the way it's supposed to happen, that's when God's going to say, okay, you want to happen it? You want it to happen that way? There you go. And then he hands you over to a reprobate mind. Um, Andrew, I want to say that I need to pause for a few minutes. Okay. Is there a way we can pause this broadcast or no? We can't specifically. I mean, we could, but then there'd be some gaps of silence within the uh, podcast. Could you do a song? Yeah, I can do a couple songs. Yeah, I can do like a song or two. Okay, because I, I really would like to understand this as much as your, uh, the uh, listeners. Um, this this is a area I understand what you're saying, but I really haven't meditated on the, these scriptures that well before, so I'm learning too. Well, good. It's always nice to learn. So... Let's take a brief minute break and we'll play a quick song and we'll let you do what you need to do. But like I said, if you lean to your own understandings and not to God's plan. Let me read my little comments for just a brief minute here. Uh, lean out to our own understandings of how we suppose it to work or we think it's supposed to happen. Instead, we are to trust in God's plan as the end of Scripture says. And in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make straight your path or direct your path. Basically, trust in his plan and not yours, and everything will fall into place. So let's, uh, let's, let's worship God for a minute here. Let's do, let's do Smile by none other than Dr. Prophet Larry Orell. We'll be back with you in just a brief minute. Enjoy Smile. Smile, though your heart is breaking Smile, what's the use of faking Even though a tear may be ever so near You can smile through the tears and sorrow Smile, there'll be sun tomorrow You'll find that life is still worthwhile if you just smile. You know I can't smile without you. Can't smile without you. I can't laugh. Can't I'm finding it hard to do anything you see I feel sad when you're sad Feel glad when you're glad If you only knew what I'm going through I just can't smile without you You came along just like a song to brighten my day Who to believe that you were part of a dream Now it all seems light years away You know I can't smile without you Can't smile without you If you only knew what I'm going through just can't smile Now some people say That happiness is So very hard to find And you're finding it hard Leaving your past behind Yes, you know I can't smile Without you Can't smile without you 
smile What's the use of faking Even though a tear May be ever so near You can smile Through the tears and sorrow Smile There'll be sun tomorrow You'll find that life Is still worthwhile If you'll just smile Welcome okay, back, I'm... guys. Sorry about that, Chris. Chris is going to run to the little boy's room for a minute. He's got to take care of some business, like always. You know, when nature calls, you always got to abide to that. But when he comes back, he does have some testimonies. Because like I said, prayer is the answer to all things. And if you don't believe that, then hear the word of the testimony when he gets back here. Because prayer was the answer to everything. That went forth that day, as we prayed for, as we as God used us to pray for Him on the show. It's not because we prayed for Him, but it's because God allowed our prayers to go forth on the show. So, with that being said, when He gets back here, we'll be talking with Him about some testimony situations. But let me let me say that again, guys. Like I was trying to say earlier, before He gets back is when you lean to your own understandings and you don't let God take care of what's going on and you don't let God be the centerpiece of your spiritual table of your household, then that's when God will not be just to forgive you. The Bible says even a little unforgiveness, you will not enter into the kingdom of God. It doesn't say, you know, you know, you have to forgive everyone but so and so. No, it says with sorry about the guys. It says with it, even a little unforgiveness, just a little unforgiveness, you will not enter into the kingdom of God, because even that right there is detrimental to your spiritual health. You you want to talk about feeling sick here on earth? Just wait till you get to hell. You'll feel even worse than you do on have on earth. That's when you're what you call spiritually sick. And physically sick is, is bad too, but spiritually sick is even worse. Because you can't feel any worse than being spiritually sick. And that's good though when Chris wanted me to pause for a minute and play a song. Because see, there are times in every believer's life that he has to just pause for a minute. And he has to group his thoughts and really comprehend what's going on. Because... Not everything the preacher says right then and there is going to be absolutely uh, understandable entirely, even though I try to make it as understandable as I can. It's not going to be as understandable to a lot of people, so we paused and we did some stuff, but let's do another song for a minute, and let's get into the KJ. <laughs> 